Integrating arpeggios into a solid tool that you can call on when you're playing a solo or doing improvisation is not an easy task. It's a new technique. It requires you to pay a little bit more attention to the chords that are being played underneath you. But while it does take time and effort to actually develop, the ideas behind building this skill are very, very easy to understand. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn a drill for switching arpeggios. Now developing this skill using arpeggios is a two-step process. I'm going to explain what arpeggios are just so we sort of all get on the same page. What is an arpeggio? Then I'm going to explain why it's a two-step process, why it's different in that way. Then we're going to zoom in. I'm going to show you a drill that addresses both of those um, skills, right? That both those steps in building the skill. Tabs for this lesson, as well as every lesson on this channel, are available on Patreon. For this specific drill, they're going to be probably pretty good to have handy because there's a lot of different switching around. Um, but if you like the channel, you like what you see, you want to get a little bit deeper, there's a ton of stuff on Patreon. Go check that out. Okay, so why are arpeggios different? Arpeggios are chords played one note at a time. So here's a chord. If I play that thing, that chord, one note at a time instead of strum it, that's an arpeggio. That's it. It's simple to understand, right? But it's not a scale. Scales have a lot more notes. Arpeggios are just chords played one note at a time. Now, when you utilize arpeggios, they're different in this way. And this, here's where the second step comes in. Let's say you're playing a blues in A. You can play the A minor pentatonic scale over that whole progression, and it'll sound fine, right? But if you're playing arpeggios, chords played one note at a time, you have to change the arpeggio every time the chord changes. That's why it's a two-step process. Learn the technique first and then be able to switch, right? Back and forth. Let's zoom in. I'm going to show you this drill that addresses both of those things. Okay, this drill is designed to just get you switching back and forth between two arpeggios because that core skill, once you get it, no matter what chords you use, once you get the skill and the mechanism of how it works, then you can start incorporating this. It starts to sneak into your playing. Um, the drill I played at the top is really simply just two chord shapes going back and forth, and then we're just moving that thing down in whole steps. Let me just show you which chords we're going to be using first. We're going to be playing D to A, and then C to G, then B flat to F, and ending on D. That's the whole sort of cadence of the whole thing. But what we're going to be doing, obviously, is arpeggiating these chord shapes, right? Once we get the mechanism down, it's just going to be taking that same relationship and moving it down in whole steps. And then we'll end with that little sort of uh, D major pentatonic run. Okay, as far as these chords are concerned, this chord, this first shape, is like your, you know, your E string bar chord. Here we are way up on the 10th fret. This is a D chord. We're going to switch to this shape. This is an A chord. The root is on the, on the A string here on the 12th fret. If you don't recognize this, if you're a fan of the cage system, you'll know what this is right away. But this is a C shape chord. In other words, if I play my C chord with these fingers and I bar the open strings, I can move this shape around. So here it's C, D, E, F, G, A. So we're going to be going from D to A. Those are the basic chord shapes we're going to be using. We're just going to switch back and forth. On this first chord, I'm not going to play the E and the A string. I'm going to start the arpeggio here on the D string. Here's what it looks like. Just those first four notes. That's the first part of the drill. So let me play that first whole um, section. That's the, that's the way we do the first chord. So again, just up these first four notes. Now I go up to the third of the chord and I do a pull off. And then play the B and the E string. Now, 
something important to look at here is the way I'm stroking this arpeggio. This is what I would call a rest stroke. Some people call this sweep picking. It's basically the idea is since this is a one note per string construct, right? I only have one note on this string, one note on this string, one here, one here. I can just use a single downstroke that moves slowly across all the strings. That's called a rest stroke from here to here, right? Because you're resting on the next string. But people also call this sweep picking. It's a nice technique to have, and it's the most efficient way to pick this idea. So once we finish this D chord, then we switch to this shape, but we're gonna descend this shape. We just went up the, the D major chord, right? Up in pitch. Now we're gonna go down in pitch on this next shape. And that goes like this. Starts with a pull off, then it goes straight down the triad. And you'll notice again, I'm, I'm rest stroking, but going in the opposite direction. So this whole part sounds like this. So I do the pull off first, rest stroke down the triad. Then I play the top three notes of the, of the chord and I ascend, I go up. So that whole part looks like this. So again, first chord sounds like this. Second chord sounds like this. And that's the entire pattern. Now we just take that same exact relationship, the same mechanics, the same picking, all of it, and we just move it down a whole step. Same thing down a whole step again. But now we change that last two notes to this. It's just like a half step phrase on the on the A string. Let me play that last chord for you again. Then we just simply ascend the D major pentatonic scale. And end on a D triad. And I'll play that part for you one more time. All notes from the D major pentatonic scale. That sets us up to start the whole thing over again. That's the whole piece. So the things to keep, um, you know, sort of at top of mind here is getting the technique down of being able to play these chords one note at a time and then and then executing this rest stroke idea of sweeping across the strings. Here's a great way to just sort of get used to that. If you don't want to sort of tackle just getting the core technique with all of these notes, just take these two triads. Here's a D triad and an A triad, right? And just use those two triads nice and slow to get this sweep picking down. Watch, I'm just going straight down. Now that I'm out here, you know, lower than the B string, I'm simply gonna play the B string as an upstroke now through the rest of the chord. Down stroke, up stroke. That's a really great way to sort of isolate the technique, make it and turn it into a micro problem and solve that problem. Once you get comfortable with that, then this, becomes much easier to do because you've got the core technique down. It's always really important when you get to a new technique that you turn it into a small micro problem and you solve that over and over again. That'll help build the technique so that you can then take the technique and apply it to a larger example. Okay, there it is. It's a pretty difficult drill to get up to speed initially if you don't have any arpeggio experience at all, but if you stick with this, if you really spend some time, right, pay the price, like 
put your effort into it and, and put that investment in. When you get on the other side and you're able to do this, it will change the way you play because you, your arpeggio capability will naturally start to just seep into what you're doing. And whenever you've come into a chord that you want to arpeggiate, you're going to have the capability to do it, right? And then when the chord changes, you won't be like, oh, now what do I do? You'll just be able to switch, right? Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this helps you get arpeggios and sort of incorporate them into a very useful tool. And I'll see you next time. Why not? Let's just say that's it. <coughs> I better take care of that. All right, that sounds about right. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Are you ready to go? I think I'm ready to go. Got my pick, got my guitar, my ideas, got my brain, got my camera. Is it that easy? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs>